Welcome to Food Trends TV. I'm Everyday Innovator Dana McCauley and we're going to kick off 2016 with a controversial discussion about GMOs, genetically modified organisms. GMOs are certainly in the news all the time, so whether you're a consumer or whether you are in the food business or you are a scientist, chances are you have an opinion. And in the consumer world, the opinion seems to fall down very heavily on GMOs are bad. In the science world, they fall down in the complete opposite side where GMOs are good. So what is the bottom line? The non-GMO trend has gained tremendous momentum in the last couple of years. In 2012, 500 or so non-GMO food products were launched in the U.S. And by 2014, that number was closer to 2,000. I don't have numbers for 2015, but I can forecast for 2016 that we are going to see more and more signage and information in grocery stores about the GMO content of foods. And certainly this is a topic that's being debated uh, at the, every level of government as well. Should GMOs be mentioned on packages? Is this a transparency issue that consumers need to know about? Scientists would argue that no, we've been eating GMOs for 20 years and all they've accomplished is making more healthy food available to more people. This summer I was in Saskatchewan talking to farmers, uh, scientists and the government about their pledge to feed the world. And that pledge firmly, firmly pivots around using GMOs and other new agri-technologies. So what I learned from these very smart and uh, seemingly very sincere people that I met in Saskatchewan is that uh, GMOs have been in our food stream now for 20 years and there's no correlation between health issues and us eating GMOs. One scientist really uh, brought it down to my level and explained it to me this way. She said, you eat a fish or an apple, you do not digest its DNA. So I went and looked that up and it's true. Our gastric juices in our stomachs break down any um, genetic material that is in the food we eat and it doesn't become part of us. So the argument that GMOs are going to cause us to mutate in some way does seem to be uh, refuted based on that science. The other interesting science I've discovered is that there was a survey um, done of literature that's been written, uh, scientific literature that's been written about the GMO uh, debate. Uh, it was done by some Italian scientists who uh, looked at about 1,700 different papers. According to them, there was no link to a negative human health effect. Uh, that could be proven in any of the papers they read. What's going to happen with GMOs here in North America is very different from what's going to happen with GMOs in the rest of the world. There's so much momentum in the non-GMO movement here in North America that I don't think we are going to be able to slow it down. I think uh, we are going to see a divide between crops for North America and Europe and crops for the developing world. Uh, Saskatchewan certainly has decided that they want to feed the developing world and they're going to do that by uh, increasing their yields and increasing their growing times and protecting uh, the health of their crops by using uh, bioscience and that includes GMOs. Then uh, the North American and uh, European markets where consumers are freaked out about GMOs and have lots and lots of choice and are very rarely hungry unless they have an economic issue, they're going to continue to demand non-GMO products because it's just a runaway train and I don't believe there's any way that in the next five to ten years we'll be able to turn around people's perceptions about them unless there is a massive and expensive scientific study done that uh, can be championed and a huge PR campaign is necessary is what I'm really trying to say. Here's the bottom line. If you do business in the food business in North America or Europe, you're going to have to keep being concerned about finding a non-GMO supply chain. If you do work in uh, the developing world, non-GMO is not going to be an issue. And in fact, you are going to find countries very comfortable with accepting uh, foods that have GMOs in them if they're a great price and good quality. 
So what do you think? Have I lost my marbles? Have I been turned by the establishment into uh, an evil spokes puppet? I personally don't think so, but I know that some of you will be very shocked to hear me say that I think that GMOs are not so bad and that there's a lot of other things that we could be talking about and a lot of other products we could be developing that would have much bigger benefit on our health. So tell me in the comment section below what you really think. I'm waiting, I'm ready, and let's have a big open discussion because I really think this is an important topic and that we should all uh, get our cards out on the table. Thanks very much. Have an awesome day and please subscribe so that we can continue the conversation on a regular basis.